they actually aired that episode on Mother's Day. Just like what Mushoku Tensei did on Father's Day. Just diabolical. Emiya Kiritsugu. I love his character. I still love his character. But that last part just makes me so mad. How he took upon himself to shoot down the plane. Taking no chance to make sure the same situation like Shirley would not happen. And thematically, it makes sense as he crosses his bridge that he cannot turn back. You've killed your dad. You've killed your mom. Now you're alone. You got nothing. You're doing everything based on what you need to do rather than thinking about what you want to do. And you've, you've just become this machine that Natalia said that you could become. And she did say his potential, his talent is scary, right? And I think that we saw it. Natalia did smile just a bit. There was a little smirk as she realized what was going on when the airplane was blown up. And maybe that was some sort of closure that Natalia is maybe proud of Kiritsugu that he took up on himself to make sure no more people would die. I don't know, but is this really what a champion of justice would do? I'm not sure. Let's begin today's reaction. Back to present time. No more backstory? Yep, no more backstory. ID. Oh no, ID. Kiritsugu. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, no more backstory, no more depression. Oh, look, it's her fucking wife that's dying. <laughs> there's no happy, there's no, no, there's, there's no happiness, there's, there's none of that shit. There's, there's none of that at phase zero. Yo, fuck Hiritsuko, man, bring Saber in here. We need to charge her, Avalon. So <laughs> Avalon? No. Ah, is Heidi gonna die today? Oh boy. There goes Heidi. Literally the only thing keeping her alive right now. If it's Heidi's time to pass, I don't want her to just die like this. I want her to go just with the bang. Now, <laughs> when I say that, I'm not I'm not saying Wrap up ID and fucking C4s and fucking suicide bombers like the Rizu clones in ReZero. No, I'm not saying a bang like that. No, no. Although that's something that maybe Kirisuke would be interested in. <laughs> I don't know, but you know, some sort of triumphant ending for ID, please. Are you? Kiritsugu's love towards Aidi, I don't understand if it's completely genuine because I have no understanding of how they even met and like the time they spent together and how distant he looks, but I think that he does genuinely love her and I think that he genuinely loves his daughter too, but he has this guilt. He has this guilt of like that he can't bear with and that's why he acts distant. I don't know. Maybe he thinks that he doesn't deserve any of this and Aidi and, you know, um, uh, what's, what's her name? Fucking the daughter too, like they're too good for him. Man, this contrast too. Look at the juxtaposition on screen right now. What do we see? Kiritsugu is a real human. Irisville is not. She's a homunculi. She's not real. As in like a real human. Yet she is more human than Kiritsugu, who's like a robot. You know, she's a doll. It's like they're opposite. That's kind of beautiful writing. Saber did all that <laughs> on their Slice of Life episodes. Iria. Yo, know, is Kiritsugu gonna fucking survive this and go meet Iria, bro? Oh, no. You better live this and go meet your daughter, bro. <sighs> Bring Ilya to Japan one day. I'm not even half it. Will, will it? You better survive. That's it? Is that it? Heidi's done? Like, that's the last time we'll see her? I don't, I don't know. Heidi, <laughs> no. Did Kiritsugu just kill another mom? <laughs> Natalia. Locked and loaded.
I just feel, give me Avalon. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, this guy's a fucking menace. Back to back. The two time. <laughs> the Mr. Two time, bro. A literal motherfucker. Now, Maya. Maya. My fucking wife is gone. Wanna go to Love Hotel? Come on now. Oh, we're gonna ride her? They don't know. They don't know. The eighth contract. Mm. <laughs> Is that a good thing? Like, 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 the implication here is Kiritsugu has finally lost Aidi, and there's nothing holding him back anymore. You're finally like your old self, even more insane, even more deranged. The only semblance of humanity was there just because of your family, and now. They're out of the picture. <laughs> Let's go. And Maya loves this shit. <laughs> okay. Say. Yo, Waver, be careful. You're gonna get jumped. Yo, is Kiritsuku gonna fucking snipe Waver? <laughs> no, no, no. This is Tokyo Me. This is Tosaka household. Crows. Crows. They're supposed to represent death, right? If there's a bunch of crows around? So that's kind of hinting that Tokyo is already dead? Never mind, it's a magic field. It's the magic field. Waver's having a picnic? <laughs> this fucking Gaijin shows up to the glorious land of the rising sun. And you're gonna shit on the fucking Japanese company food, bro? Hey, shut the fuck up. The 7 Eleven in Japan, way better than where you're from. <laughs> just more casual, just a writer being so adaptable to the modern society of Japan. He just knows all the best spots. Writer knows every best restaurant in Japan. <laughs> I don't know, Forest. Oh, most compatible with you. Okay. He's still tired from the noble phantasm usage. Dub waver intuition. Okay. Uh-oh, what's going on, Ryder? You're gonna recover from this, right? Pass on any of the costs to me. So it sounds like when you use the noble... Also, that's hilarious. I just, he just, <laughs> him just sitting here with the face out is hilarious to me. But the implication here is that Ryder did not want to burden his men, Waver, right? His, his vassal, right? With that burden. So he took it upon himself to do it. He's like being a king. He doesn't want his people to suffer. He took it upon himself so that Waver doesn't have to take on the burden. Ryder, you're isn't this a bit contradicting to his philosophy about how a king is so superior and leads and the people does everything for the king in this situation? The people, the waver, should have supplied mana to Ryder. But right now, Ryder took upon himself to almost be kind of like chivalrous, like, like Saber, where you're being a ruler for the people rather than the people for you. Is this his downfall? His, his one mistake, the blunder, where he contradicted his own ideals, and now he's paying for it? Huh. Here's about you, kid. Yeah, but you're a king of conquerors, and the people should be happy to sacrifice themselves. The people for the king, but this is the exact opposite of what we've been talking about at the banquet talk, right? Okay, 
It's funny like this. Why are you having this epic dialogue in this fucking mode like this? I can't take you seriously when you look like this, bro. Yeah, and, and the grill might be cursed by dear mood. Mm. Okeanos. And he never reached it. And exactly, right? This is his fault. Not every ideology or way of living is absolutely correct. Even Ryder has his own flaws, where because of his blind fucking um, ambition to find Okeanos, the pursuit made a lot of people die, and they never even fucking found it. But he still doesn't regret it, right? Regret is can't happen. That's right, the world is not flat. <laughs> I'm sorry, Ryder, this is not the ReZero world. Like, if you saw the Great Waterfalls, yeah, that would have been great. It reached the end of the fucking world and fucking found the waterfalls at the edge of the world. Yeah, that's Okeanos, but like in here, I'm sorry, bro. You, you, we got a fucking, we got a round world. Lame. Yeah, he accepted it. But we don't even know if the grill is a real thing. I don't want you to die, Waver. Shoot that plane down. <laughs> I think Ryder's gonna die next. Bro. What are they doing right now? This is like a final dialogue, like... What the hell? You're setting up his end! Like, they're having these final closure moments of like... A writer accepting Waver, Waver accepting Ryder, and he... The, the completion of his character arc, what the fuck? Oh boy... Yeah, how nerfed are you? Nah, you need a noble phantasm. One last NP. <laughs> Man. That grail banquet... <sighs> I know that we got rid of all the assassins, but I'm just starting to realize how I fucking... How much of a waste of a noble phantasm that was, right? Because if, if Ryder had this for Saber and Archer, I don't know, he could probably do really well, but like, shit, he got only one left, and the whole river fight took so much out of it. Due to the clash of ideals? To prove that Saber's way of living as a king is not the real thing, and like, I'm still correct? Is that what it is? <laughs> Ryder's gonna save Saber. Will she understand? I don't know. I honestly don't even know if Saber even requires saving because, again, these ideals and philosophies are not perfect for everyone, right? Everyone is flawed. So, is Ryder even in the place to be correcting Saber? At least in this Fate Zero adaptation for Saber, it seems like they are, and that Saber is flawed, and she is just an innocent, sorry, uh, a fraudulent, naive little girl chasing after her foolish ideals. Oh no. Who are you? Like, he must be a dude from the Knights of the Round Table. There's a connection with Saber, but who are you? He's actually talking too, I just realized. Like Saber. Saber. Her. Her. Honor. Saber. Mask is coming off? I was hoping to see a face that I recognize from the game or something, but dude, this isn't fucking hell. You're just a skeleton. Ah! <laughs> and he's back. Aw, oh, Zoken's so nice. Man, look at that. Zoken is such a good dad. Kitty dropped, you know, Kadia off after he got too wasted at a party. Zoken chained him up and healed him up with the worms. Aw, dub dad. <laughs>
もうじき、俺は死ぬ。あおい、サクラ。ちくしゃ。Do it for Sakura, come on! ゾウケン。まったくずいぶんなざむ。<笑>勘違いするで、せめておるのではない。Yeah, you never even expected it from him? <laughs> This piece of shit is looking kind of low key funny though. Like, yeah, he's an abhorrent person, but something about him is hilarious. Just like, he just says this shit. <laughs> Hello, my son. <laughs> you think I saved you because I'm a father? Nah, I'm surprised you fucking lasted this long, brother. Nah, I need you to, you know, do your last thing. Come on, bro, struggle. Struggle a little bit more. Trump card? Wait, we got special worms coming in? Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a special warm, bro. There was a huge special warm. Oh, what the fuck is that thing? I don't know what went inside him, though. More veiny. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What? Sakura's like energy? This is fucked up. Like the warm treatment of Sakura and all the energy that sucked up has now been given to Kadia. His source of strength is Sakura. What the hell? What the hell? Also, the, the, the term purity is quite sus. Right? The warm I just gave you was the first to feed on Sakura's purity. Sounds very sus. And I think it's very intentional on what they're hinting at. But. Kadia's source of power now is Sakura, I guess, through the worms. Entire year. Damn. This is so fucked up. His entire thing was sacrificing himself for Sakura so she doesn't have to suffer. But now he can't even fight. His source of power has become Sakura's like suffering. Like, whoa. Again, just like, such like beautiful writing, so much like, it's just poetry, right? It's disgusting what's happening, but you can tell that this shit is all planned out. There's something like, so like beautiful about this, even though it's so twisted. Maya? Aidy's still alive! I thought. I thought she gone. <laughs> I was fully ready to be like, all right, bye, Idy, but she's still here. Okay. What are they saving her for? What, what the fuck are they saving Idy's feel for? Hey, what's your background? Is Maya literally like Kiritsugu and Kiritsugu is Natalia? Like to Maya, Kiritsugu is her Natalia? Huh. Fake name. I don't even know who she is. What's that backstory? <laughs> Waver's grandparents' place. She's from a worn torn nation. Who? Kiritsuko. Yeah. It is efficient, right? At the end of the day. Child labor and slavery is one of the humanity's greatest fucking foundations for just productivity, I guess. Yo, where Tokyo me body at? Fucked up life, child soldier, dead inside, has nothing to live for. Kiritsugu accepted her. Now she feels some semblance of, I don't want to say family, but comfort with Kiritsugu. You can use me the way you want. Tokyo me. She has, she's like, she's a diehard for Kiritsugu's ideals and dreams though. And I'm not sure if the Einsburn homunculi are also like pre-programmed to always be devoted to the cause for heaven's feel. I'm not sure. 
きちんと理解できているわけ。What? マヤさんの言う通り。私は。Yeah, how old is that blood, Kirisugu? Borrowed. Damn, hold up, hold up, hold up. I don't understand a thing about the world Kirisugu trying to change. Yeah, she can't know because she's never been outside. Is she just LARPing? I don't know, I already seem very convicted since episode 1 of Fate Zero, but she's never left the Einsburn castle until now. How could she possibly understand what the world is like and what Kiritsuko is trying to change, but she just die hard forever for Kiritsuko. What did he do? What was the other meeting? <laughs> okay. Was she just down bad for Kiritsuko? And she's just riding that? She's just glazing? Yeah! Yeah, those sacrifices. Woo! You can do it, Kiritsugu. You got your dreams and ideals. That's what it's seeming like in the anime. Blind glazing? I pretend to understand him? Blind glazing? Why, though? What about Kiritsugu made you want to blindly glaze him? To be a real human? I is too good for this world. Heaven's field. So, even though she has no outside, uh, understanding of the outside world, she still has a vague idea and the general idea that with Kiritsugu's wishes come true, then like fighting will stop, right? She doesn't know completely how. Kiritsugu handles business. In fact, the whole Kaneth episode where he made Kaneth sign that yes and then Maya took him out. It's the first time ID actually saw how he handles business. But it sounds like she bought that dream of, oh, and at the end, if my dreams come true, right? People, there will be no more war. There will be no more suffering. And ID kind of bought that without fully understanding what that entails. <laughs> Who gonna tell her that this is a fucking prologue? Who gonna tell her that unlimited blade works exist? <laughs> Who gonna tell face day night? Unlimited blade works? Heaven's <laughs> There's a lot of different fucking holy grail and then there's apocrypha and then there's a fate special <laughs> Listen, if the holy grail war ends, the Nasuverse cannot function and make money. I'm sorry, Iri, your dumb ideals cannot get in the way of capitalism. <laughs> Hmm. Idia? Next? Only the blade works, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god, Tokiomi was gooning. Look at all these traces, I'm like, what's Kiritsuko doing right now? Jesus, bro, that's what he's fuck- This is his goon cave. This is straight up Tosaka Tokyo's goon cave. That's what he's doing when he's just waiting for the fucking- Alright, do we have any new intel? Come on, assassins, come on. Kire, anything? He's fucking cranking it at home, bro. Live, Maya. You must survive, Maya. Oh. Whoa! That means if Orange was Tokiomi, then Orange here is also Tokiomi. Kiritsugu has figured out the murder mystery. Genius. Oh, what? Yo, Kiritsugu, come back! Wait, Ryder? Yeah, it's Ryder. <laughs> he does say he's gonna pay us a visit. I'm like, Jesus Christ, who is this? What's up? Better get back home quick, bro. Oh shit! First command spell used. Too late! Yo, Ryder kidnapped ID? Yo! Maya might be dead too. What the fuck, Ryder? Yeah, him calling Saber puppet there was pretty raw. I order my puppet to go back home.
There's no way Maya actually dies here, right? Literally when Aidy was like, Maya, you must survive for me. You must know the meaning of your life, your name, your family. <laughs> sure, after this battle, boom, comes the big man. Are you fine? Maya, don't die on me now. Come on. Where are we going? How are we gonna find Ryder? Oh, that's that simple. Yeah. Wait, how is he floating there? Is he? Have, does he have his chariot? Bro, just looks like he's flying there. <laughs> I don't know. No. Yeah, it's just a huge jump. Bro has a fucking 4,000 meter vert. Kirisugu, who could have done this? Get your fucking spray out. You need to go. Mm, that color. And then spray somewhere else. <gasps> Ryder must have been here. Maya. No shot. Maya dead? No, no, no. Kirisugu's crying for her? <laughs> this motherfucker didn't cry for Aini's feel. He took that fucking Avalon out, no tears, dry eye, just... Yup. Business. Gotta do what I gotta do. Bro, he cried for fucking Maya, not Aini! <laughs> Save it for your wife! You can clearly see who he likes more, I guess? I don't know? Yeah. But you're back. <sighs> Fulfill your purpose, your job, your mission. That's the greatest words that Maya could listen to someone that's already dead inside. Rest in peace, homewrecker. Maya, you were great. Maya was actually such a great character, bro. I loved her. Bro, she's... she's, she's you know what he should have done? But he, this motherfucker should have put the Avalon. He, 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 he Avalon her. You have Avalon. He, 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 what is he? <laughs> and maybe, I don't know, maybe we're Avalon's out of fucking battery. You need Saber to supply the fucking battery. But ugh. I thought that Avalon needs Saber to recharge it. And like the more closer to Avalon you are, like the more effective the anti-aging and like the healing properties are. And that's why even though Saber was not near Idis Field because she still had Avalon, it was like kind of still working at like, I don't know, 20% efficiency or something. I don't know, bro. But like, God, he cries for Maya. And maybe he cried for Maya here because he knew Maya was going to die at this moment. But Idis Field... You know, she ain't dead. Like, damn. If you told me at the beginning of the episode, right? If you told me at the beginning of this fucking episode, you show me this shit, and I'm like, oh no! I'm just gonna die! And Maya's just like, you know, outside just fucking chilling, man. And I'm like, you, I would have never fucking believed you. That fucking... Maya's the one that's gonna die, and I'm gonna be fine. This bitch fucking played us. This, this bitch fucking played us, bro. What the hell? But I, I think... I guess it makes sense. I just feel this, like, so it is pretty much 100% confirmed that Kiritsugu values Maya more than I just feel. Even if Kiritsugu has had a daughter with I just feel, it's nothing compared to the bond that Maya and Kiritsugu have shared as it's similar to like a Natalia and Kiritsugu situation. Both of them have seen hell together. Both of them has gone on missions together. But Aidy has never left the palace and she just, you know, is at home. I don't know. This this makes me feel like that like Kirisugu values Maya way more than I just feel or maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Maya. Maya. Return of the Assassin is today's episode, huh? And is the Return of the Assassin basically who Kirisugu is? That like Yes, when, you know the comment that Maya said, 
You know the comment where Maya said, you're back to your normal self. And we thought that because Kiritsuku has now lost his wife, seemingly, and he's cold and rugged. But actually, but actually, the real Return of the Assassin is when Maya dies from Kiritsuku's life. And now, it is the true return of the old Kiritsuku. Maybe it's something like that. This episode... <laughs> it was pretty sad. I think every episode is just gonna be sad and depressing, right? I mean... Phase Zero is a fucking... It's, it's a story about war and a battle royale. Of course, it's gonna be bad endings, but it's really just hitting on me, man. Because, like, the earlier episodes, you know, it's the beginning of the battle royale. No one's really dying. Everyone's just kind of introducing yourself. It's having fun, but... We're in the last couple episodes of Fate Zero, man. And people left, right, center, they're all dying. Rider vs. Saber is gonna happen. I'm not sure what the outcome of that's gonna be, but he can only use one more Noble Phantasm. We'll see how this shit ends. And that's it for me. If you're still here, though, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. Then until next time, take care.